Hey, horror fiends, we are back for the finale of The Last of Us. My name is Lexi. This is JR and Ricky Grimes. Whatever way it goes, <laughs> I never know which way it goes. But again, we're here for the finale, guys. I am actually super sad about it. Um, but I'm also, I guess, expected a lot. And did it deliver? I guess we'll find out. But starting with JR, what was your reaction to the finale of The Last of Us? I felt this one was supposedly mostly emotional driven. However, uh, like we spoke in the last one, two, three, four, five episodes, the lack of uh, infected. Uh, yeah. so we only get like one at a time, except for that, you know, the sniper scene. But yeah, I was kind of expecting that. And to not have the season finale end with some kind of clicker or a swarm of clickers kind of, I would say it was a letdown for me. I mean, I understood what they were trying to do and build a storyline as, you know, somebody who's never played the game, the storyline between, um, you know, Joel's attachment to Ellie. And basically the, the episode was showing how even for them, it was difficult for them to talk about, you know, how they actually feel about each other now and how he sees her, you know, which we'll talk about later about, you know, like a daughter now replacement in a way but yeah for me um like a lot of it was predictable to be honest once, once they got into the hospital and kind of knew where they were going to go with it i mean it was too predictable uh, predictable ain't always bad though it's yeah. not but when I don't you know. don't have the infection as part of the finale and it's just i don't know for me i expect a lot more and i would say this episode ended with the right word Okay. Uh, well, I, I love this episode. I thought this episode was great. I, the infection, or lack thereof, I, I am I am on board with that, but the show's been so good that I don't care. And I, guys, also consider, I came off of The Walking Dead over 11 years of watching that show, and it got so tiring having them always having to shoehorn walkers or gore just to fill that quota in there. And I think this season wasn't about that. This was definitely between about Joel and Ellie, and we got all that. Could there have been more action as far as infected? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I think besides that, I think they followed the the game to a T on this. Can't ask for anything better than that. And I and I, I'll take the ending with Joel's decision and the impact it made not only on him but what it's going to do to Ellie over a big fight with a bunch of clickers just to have the big fight with clickers for people like us to shut up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love, I love the way this episode was, was formatted you know, and the pacing was great. Um, I mean, if, if it's going to, there's going to be nitpicks, of course, that's without, you know, without saying, but I think overall, I loved it. And I got my giraffe finally. So I'll, that scene with the giraffe again, Yeah, I'll take that. Anytime over any scene with any infected or clickers. That was my favorite scene in the video game. And here, bro, even even better. I loved it. I loved it. So yeah, without it's got its issues, but overall, I'm okay with it. I, I had a great time and um I just wish it was a longer episode. That's my biggest gripe on it. 45 minutes and it didn't feel like it rushed anything, but it felt like you know they could have had more. And yeah. There could have been more action as far as between humans and infected, if you want to put it that way. But if I didn't get clickers or nothing, I'm right with that. The season was that good. Now, for season two, they got to up that ante. Now we got Joel and Ellie are both established. We don't got to waste no more time building their relationship and who they are. We got that this season. Next season, now they got to they gotta bump that up. Yeah, I agree with both of you. Um, it's it's funny that you chose the word predicting because me playing the game, I already know what the hell's coming up. But I also knew that yeah, I was going to be disappointed because, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I knew I was going to be disappointed in a way only because the last uh, of, you know, the finale, I knew there was going to be no infection. It was between Marlene, Joel, and the hospital, the doctor, and all of that. That was all against, uh, what was it? The fireflies. Yeah, I saw what you did there. You said the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, 
I already knew the infected was probably not going to happen. I do like that they put a small infection with Anna and Ellie. And um, so I get that part because we got to see a part of Ellie's past. <sighs> Did I want more? Yes. I think all three of us wanted more. We can agree with that, uh, especially with the infected. You, They set the bar so high in the first episode um, with the three men talking in the beginning. And it gave us some, gave us some, really gave us some with Perry and then like dead from five episodes. So I was really, I mean, but I also knew it wasn't going to happen. I just didn't want to say nothing out loud. I but, will say that though. The I think the first two episodes with the uh, cold opens yeah. set the bar so high for me. And then all I of agree. a sudden they dropped all that. That's yeah. a problem. I have a problem with that. That's I, the I, problem I have with it too. That, that sense of, like, dread was gone by episode yeah. three. But overall, with the infected part aside, putting my feelings on that aside, it was a great episode regarding the story with uh, Ellie's past and Joel and his opening up to Ellie about his past. And so I love the growth between the two. That was great. Cool. And the twist with Marlene and what was going to happen with Ellie. That was great. I, I mean, of course I knew that. <laughs> but I, I am curious, you know, how jo uh, JR, I almost said Joel. <laughs> uh, I, how JR felt about that part with Marlene, that scene. That's because that scene was pretty important to the entire episode. And, um, but from the game to the episode, spot on. Uh, there's oh, yeah. definite, definite Easter eggs in this one. So I put the question back on the map this week. <laughs> so speaking of Joel, the onions are fried, my guys. <laughs> like they're fried. His oh, onions are leaked oh, out. Oh, 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 the important <laughs> scene was the part where he was talking about, you know, his past and his motivation was to uh, basically, well, not his motivation, so to speak, but his emotional aspect is he wasn't mentally all there in a moment of time in his past. And he wanted to take himself out, right? So with that being said, he had no will to live after he lost Sarah, but for some reason it didn't happen. And something in him felt it wasn't going to happen because he found his new, I think you said a Jar, almost kind of a replacement yeah. um, that he found his why of he continues to go. And so you saw the look, I think we all saw the look on Ellie's face when he didn't necessarily say it. You caught that, right? He didn't necessarily say her name. She's the one that stopped me. Well, not stopped from the situation that he was in in his past, but his motivation to keep going. So just that moment just made my heart like grow three times bigger, like the Grinch, because that moment was so important from them too. And I still have more to say on that moment, but I'm going to hold that for later. So JR, the onions are leaked out. What did you think about um, Joel and how his emotions got to him or didn't get to him during this? But ironically, he he did two things. He brought himself closer to um, Ellie, but by the end of the episode, he pushed her away. The reason I'm saying that is because of the fact that you get this whole buildup where he's talking about the suicide. You get the connection there, and the, you know how you were saying how he basically she was one of the reasons that. You know, he's continuing now. Yeah. But after he rescues her, the first thing he starts doing is comparing her, her to Sarah to the point where not only is he pushing her away, but the fact that she knows that he lied to her about taking out Marlene and the Fireflies. 100%. She knows, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he kind of accomplished two things at the same time, bringing her close, but at the same time towards the end, pushing her away and... I mean, it, it was a good emotional roller coaster. Don't get me wrong. It was, it was it was really good. I mean, you knew he was going to rescue her. I mean, for somebody who did, never played the game, I knew he was going to rescue her. There was no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could tell that they they wanted to talk about it, but 
you know, he was trying to play the father role where she was basically still recovering from what happened to her in the last episode at the same time, how she views him because, you know, she almost lost him in the process too. So it, it was emotionally driven, you know, episode. And yeah, I mean, it, it was well done. Um, I was curious to see, you know, like now I kind of know what's going to happen, you know, the next season the whole time she's going to, for me, well, we'll talk about that later, but yeah, I mean, emotional, emotional roller coaster was well done. And yeah, it was, it was expected. It was finally expected in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you just said. Actually, everything that Joel did in this in this episode was definitely for Ellie, and even if it meant like saving the world essentially, but he couldn't sacrifice Ellie. The moment he found out that this was lethal, immediately find someone else, and he knows there's no one else, but he just, just finds someone else and be like, no, you know we can't do that. And right there, the his wheels started turning. Okay, how am I gonna get her out? He's looking around. He's probably deciding, All right, I'm going to take this person. He, he's already made up his mind what he was going to do before he even got kicked out. Um, and I like I, overall from the first episode to the last episode, I think Joel's journey has captured perfectly on film. And it, it, it gives you this sense of like you want him, you want to root for him, but you know he's not a hero. He's not a villain. You know, he's just he's shades of gray. He does what he has to do. For the people he loves and you know he'll do anything at this point to keep ellie alive he did it before because she was a cure but now he had that chance he loves her. and yeah he, he fucked that up now he's it's just him and her now what they're gonna do now i didn't play the second game so i have no idea where it goes from here so it's quite interesting and and from the beginning to the end like joel lying to her flat out and she knows it and he probably knows she knows too he's not stupid both these characters are not stupid but I think they're going to ride with it. I think she understands why Joe did it, though. I think she understands, and she just wanted to hear him say it. But he couldn't bring himself to it. But, yeah, he, I think emotionally, Joel and Pedro Pascal, in, 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 you know, in particular, oh, my God, such range in his show. And Bella Ramsey proves me wrong. <laughs> I was one of the yeah. ones that was not happy with the cast. And not because of the whole, you know, it's because when you play the game, you got a certain character in mind for a long time. Then someone is cast, and you don't see that person. I saw Ellie in it by the time this this season was over. So, and I can't wait for her to come back. I want Pedro back, and I just can't wait to come back to this because this I, this ending was brave. Because most games is one thing, but for a show to end their season like this with that decision and that's the moral compass completely broken. And where do we go from here? That's awesome. So, yeah, I, I think Joel's journey and the emotion attached to it. Good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Because remember, in the very first couple of episodes, he said she's just cargo. Cargo. Yeah. And now this is baby girl. Wow, she's baby girl. Yeah. So the emotion, like, y'all know if you've been tuning in, and I know you have been, that I've been on an emotional roller coaster throughout this whole thing. I've been crying every episode and I'm going to cry because it fucking ending. And, you know, we want so much more from this and I just can't wait to get on to season two. But with that aside, Joel, seeing him to go from the emotional roller coaster of being cargo to baby girl, you know, he sold me. Uh, Pedro Pascal, you know, bravo, give him his flowers. And Bella, too. She did great. Um, their chemistry is what sells you know, you know, sells me and sells everyone watching. Um, regardless of the issues that we have with the show, this show was great. And um, I love that Joel can portray himself as such a jackass and then also show his emotional side, like I've been saying, with his onions leaking. And um, I just loved in this particular episode that he had such awe, such love towards her, especially at the part with the giraffe. Um, I was so happy for you, Rick. I was like, Rick! I thought that was good old, man. I forgot it was this late into the story. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Shit. Oh, oh, I didn't know. I didn't catch that. I thought that, I thought that was going to be walk. I know, you know. I'm waiting for you know. I'm actually gonna save it. Never mind. But anyways, I, I love shit like that, man. Because yes. the whole world is gone, and for someone like Ellie to see that, and the way these giraffes mm-hmm. are just 
out and about. Obviously, they were from yeah. Missouri, but now the, now the city is their home, and this it's it's such a weird juxtaposition to what's out there. But yet you got this horrible situation going on. But yet there's still time for these beautiful creatures to like roam the earth, man. Right. And I was so happy for you, Rick. I was like, I was screaming Rick in the living room. And I was like, it's happening. I thought they skipped it. Like, I forgot the timeline. Where well, you know what sold me? It was they were going through the, um, what was it? A construction site looking place. Yeah. And he said, bring down the ladder. And I was like, oh my God. Say, whoa. Say, whoa, Ellie. And she goes, whoa. And I knew it was happening. Yeah, yeah. And, I was, and she dropped the ladder for Joel. The whoa was what got me. I was like, oh, shit. I think they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so happy. And I, you know, I cried. <laughs> but, yeah, Joel, um, Pedro Pascal has made No giraffe, by the way. No giraffe. No yeah. CGI. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. It was a real giraffe. I, I read that. Um, now on to Ellie, we learned a little bit about her past and we meet Anna, her mother. And so I'm curious on what you guys think of Ellie's little history there. I think this is the only nitpick I have on it. The placement of where they put it in the beginning of, of the episode. I, I, it kind of threw me off. I wasn't sure. Cause the first time I started seeing it, I mean, I know. It was one of the Easter eggs of you know who's the one playing um, Anna. I already know that one, but the fact is, when I looked at, it, I was like, "Oh, did they jump in time or something?" Because you know, I thought this was the future already. Like they did a whole time skip on it. But I think if they would have took this portion out and dropped it when Marlena's talking about it, oh, you know, to Joel, oh, I I, I know more than anybody about you know Ellie and you know her and her mother. Then you would have did the flashback there. I think it would have, it would have fallen a little better. But for somebody who's never played the game, you know, for yeah. me, I think if they would have dropped it there, like, all right, okay, now we get a little more in depth of Marlena because you know we, we get Marlena in there, but the whole time I'm, like I said, I think it was a flat. I, I was looking like, all right, they, they jumped ten years ahead of time. But for me, if they would have placed it in the hospital when Marlena's talking to Joel, I think it would have been the perfect spot to go back into like, all right, now we get a little more in depth on how, you know, Ellie. You know, was you know immune because you know my mother gave birth to her while she was she got bit. Um, and then you understood know, a little bit about you know more Marlena. Now being like somebody who didn't play the game, I wish we had more Marlena because she was a character that I feel like they could have went a lot more with, especially like the background with Anna. You know, taking care of Ellie, the fact that she knew she had to sacrifice Ellie in order to get this cure, regardless of what she told Anna about, she'll always take care of her daughter. So it, it was a cool thing to to see. For me, like I said, it's just a nitpick. It's just the placement of it would have been better in a better spot where, you know, it would have been more cohesive for the story. But, yeah, it was kind of cool seeing it because, you know, you thought that when she got bit in the mall then she was just immune, but you just didn't know how she got immune, which I thought that was a cool twist. Kind of reminded me of, like, Blade, his birth. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah I uh, I could understand the placement. I I love cold opens, and this cold open to me was cool because it was set apart from everything else. And I and of course, your know, GR had mentioned it. You know, Ashley Johnson playing you know, Ellie's mother is such a cool. You know, it just it's an, the, just look at the image. You know, video game Ellie giving birth to you know show Ellie was fucking yeah, look alike cool. too. She looks like Bella Ramsey. So no, nice. she does. Fact. Yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they made her look that way, like her hair. I don't know what it was, but she did. And she looked at like she went, she was going through hell, man. I felt bad for her. And it, I met her just, what, a few minutes on screen. I was already feeling like so much attachment towards her. I'm like, no, don't kill her. No, you know, but you know, she's gone. But and Marlena, Marlene, the way she did it, like she knew like she didn't want to do it. She walked up. She heard her suffering. You know what? I can't leave her like that. And she turns around, does the deed and cut to the actual show um i think i love that and one other thing with that too you mentioned marlena jr this one thing with the this season up uh, aside from episode three i never it followed the game almost to like you know how the game is built like in chapters you know in a sense this is how the show is structured episode one two three you know 
And like episode one will focus on this, you know. For example, Sam and Henry only have one episode because in the game they have one chapter. You know, mm-hmm. same thing with Bill. We've got Bill for one episode essentially. We got him going for here. So and then Marlene, same thing. Marlena was in the beginning and she was at the end of the game. And in the show, she's in the beginning. And then at the end, the problem is with the show, like GR said, when you get you get attached to them more because you see an actual human face and actor attached to them. That's not, you know, not kind of CGI. I always feel more attachment towards like the uh, a, a human, like whether it's a comic book ad- adaptation going to the show, like Walking Dead or this from video game. I don't know what it is, but because I have an actual human attachment as a side from a CGI one, it feels more. And I wanted more Marlena because of that. I think she was a very interesting character. I feel like you feel that way because they also used the voices from the game too here. Yeah. So I I love that they. I love that they did that, and I love that the fact that the game developer was one of the head honchos behind the actual show. That makes perfect sense. If you look at all the like, even like in the background, you'd be seeing like a lot of video game like Easter eggs on there. They don't mean nothing. It's just. If you happen to catch it, oh, look, cool. I remember that. Or <laughs> see a comic book that was in the game that you got to collect. You see one randomly in the show. So all that stuff was pretty good. And I, I love that the, I love that they did incorporate Ellie's origin in this in this episode. Again, mm-hmm. at 45 minutes, the opening was a little long. And it kind of dragged or took away from the rest of the episode. But that's not the scene's fault. It's just the amount of time they were given for this. But, yeah, I, I dug it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ellie's past, we don't get that in the game. But with that being said, the way JR said uh, about sh- the, the placement of that scene with Anna should have been when, you know, Marlena was talking with Joel. In the game, I'm just going to go ahead with this little Easter egg. But in the game, you know how doctors like they have to put their notes on a recorder sometimes so that they can write it later. Well, Marlena always carried a recorder in the game and she talked a lot about Anna. So you got yeah. her point of view through the recorder and Joel and Ellie collects the recorders as the game goes on. So you got little hints here and there. So in the part where she's talking to Joel in in the hospital room, um, before he she goes in to talk to him, she's actually recording saying, Anna, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. And then she goes and talks to Joel. And breaking the news to Joel like breaks your heart. <laughs> and that's one of the other little onion laters with Joel is that scene itself. Is he really just wants he's he's being selfish if you think about it. Yeah. I hate to say it like that, but I mean, if it was me and my daughter, <laughs> I'd be just as selfish, selfish as Joel. Yeah. So I get it. But um, before we move on to to the next one, though, I wanted to bring up to another. I think, in my opinion, having the Marlena and the cold open mm-hmm. reminds uh, viewers who are not too familiar with the game, but they, it reminds them of the character Marlena, what she means to the story, and what she means to Ellie. Instead of dropping this in the middle somewhere where you already see Marlena, I think it's good you see that to remind you. Oh, okay, I I remember that character. I know what her situation is. I know where I last saw her. And then when they see her later on again, you don't have to be like, wait a minute. Oh, I remember her because you already got that in the beginning. Right. I think that's why maybe they, they put it there. So it's right. interesting though when we talk about placement. Me, me and Jared go about this a lot in Three Corners because mm-hmm. placing certain scenes in certain parts of your story makes it or breaks it. Yeah, right. So, yeah. I mean, they still did good with it because, like I said in the last episode, it was in addition to David and James getting the backstory, and we got an addition this episode for the yeah, finale 100. of Ellie's story background. Um, I mean, we got a little too much of a background with um, her and Riley, but to have that oh, little yeah. cold yeah. open with yeah. her mother, yeah um we don't get that in the game we just know what's on the voice recorders Mm -hmm. so but and it even with that it wasn't that detailed where that's what happened between her and marlene so i love that they gave us that i loved that uh, the one stalker clicker we got um it It wasn't a flashback (laughs) too i'm surprised you had to mention that that's true that's true though but it makes sense it makes sense 
Mm. I love that they thought of backstories and made them up. That would make sense into the game uh, and series. Mm -hmm. So I love that we yeah, now have a reason to Ellie's situation because we don't get that in the game. So I liked their backstory. Um, Anna and like you said, Anna, Ellie, <laughs> I think that's great. And I kept hearing Ellie like you kept hearing Troy uh, Baker. Yes, I heard it too. I heard it. I yeah. kept hearing Ellie's voice and I'm just like, oh, making my ear twitch a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> that's so cool. That they bond. And once again, that that's awesome. I love the fact that they did that. Yeah, me too. Uh, so Easter eggs, changes, me and Rick. Uh, anything you noticed? Um, other other than the giraffe. Well, all right, Easter eggs. I'm gonna say this for what I did. There's Easter eggs that are going to be for the next season, which we'll get to that at the end. Um, other than that, it was so straightforward that they weren't hiding anything really. Um, I can't. I mean, uh, that was was that Shimmer? That wasn't Shimmer. That was that was shot, right? Shimmer was shot. That was Shimmer. So Shimmer yeah. dies in the game too. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, wow, but they, see, all right, I got a problem with that because in this in this series, they never even called her Shimmer, did they? I uh, yeah. They, so in, Ellie in, named in, her when they met uh, in Jackson Town. Okay, they mentioned Shimmer. Yeah. Wow. Because okay. we mentioned it as an Easter egg in that episode. That, that's like Link losing Epona and the Ocarina of Time, man. You you can't, you know. I'm dating myself with that one, JR. Knows. <laughs> but yeah, um, how about you? I mean, I know you caught all the Easter eggs. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I thought I heard JR said he knows an Easter egg. Was no, it was a girl basically who plays Ellie, was the one who was playing Anna. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Marlene, well, let's, talk plays... about, let's, talk, let's talk about it now, though. Let's see, what's, what's the Easter egg with the whole hospital scene? There's a lot in there, so like you mentioned, Ricky. Um, there's a lot of leaking e Easter eggs in this episode of The Last of Us 2. And I really don't want to go into those for you and JR's sake, because now it's going to be one against two. That's all right. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, they don't give away too much here. That no, they gonna, don't. So but It's just a matter of like foreshadowing. That's all. I'm just going to say the doctor is super important. I'm also going to say, and this is actually, I mean, it's an Easter egg, but it, okay, so... There's somebody in The Last of Us 2 that voice, uh, some lady voices somebody in The Last of Us 2, but she's one of the nurses with the doctor. So, so I thought that was cool. The person in question, this is not giving nothing away, but her name is, uh, what's your name? I Wait, you want me to say the name? That's fine. It's not a spoiler. From The Last of Us 2? Yeah. Okay. I so, forgot her name. What's her name? Abby. Abby. So Abby... Did you catch her? She was in this episode. She was. Yeah, she was I in didn't it. Catch her. Mm -hmm. But she was not her face visually. No, it was just, a shadow of her. Just like um Ellie's you see the friend braid. You see the braid yeah. run out. Yeah. And you and, and of course the doctor you that you speak of, the nurse, is her voice from the video game. So they, right. they so pop the, them both in. There. That's what I was saying is uh, yeah, yeah. the girl that voices Abby in The Last of Us 2 is one of the nurses yeah. with the doctor. That's cool. So they, exactly... they're taking characters from the second one and um, already introducing them subtly right. though. Very subtly. Subtly. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that until my friend that always watches our podcast and, you know, plays the game. He was like, did you catch that? It was the nurse. And I was like, wait, what? No, she had the mask on. I don't know. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't pay attention. I was listening to the moment that was happening, yeah. you know, unhook her. Let's, let's get her off of the table. <laughs> That's all I was paying attention to, but I knew let's, I'm just going to plant a seed in y'all's mind since y'all know nothing that the doctor is super important to the last of us too. Gia, let me ask you a question. Would you have shot that doctor like Joe did? Mm. I mean, Joel didn't give that guy one second to think. Not second. one second. <laughs> no, you're not taking it. Boom. <laughs> uh, I think I would have kidnapped him. Mm. She would have kidnapped him to get answers. Sh shoot him in the leg. Get some answers. Absolutely. Shoot him in the leg. One thing, one, one of the things Marlena said was, we think it's going to work. So it was not even a guarantee that was going to work. It's and not I, a guarantee. I think that's what that's what Joel wasn't ready to take that chance. Yeah, I think I think it was just fucking took him with me. He, you know, <laughs> he stole <laughs> Ellie's purpose. That was her purpose, you know, and he mm -hmm. took it from her without asking her. So yeah, who wouldn't? But like the the conversation they had in the bedroom at Jackson Town, I'm not your father and I'm not your daughter. Like 
with the giraffe in the background. <laughs> yeah, the picture, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the picture. But um, yeah, he she she went from cargo to you're not my daughter to baby girl. <laughs> like it's been what an emotional roller coaster. Also, she too, she never gave up on Joe. Joe kicked her out and she still stayed, she sewed still him up and got and went and got help and tried to get help. So he saw mm -hmm. that. And that's when he realizes it's, it's, yeah. it's his cold heart started to melt away and, and come back. So it was really brave of Joel to feel those emotions and actually express it to Ellie. Mm -hmm. And now she quite understands, but now she sees that, whoa, he loves me finally. Cause I've been loving him. Like, can you not tell? <laughs> but, um, as I think that's all with Easter eggs. Like I, there's so much to say without giving so much, but that is, I saw the shadow of a braid, which Abby has a braid. <laughs> oh, that's and, intentionally. They did that shot intentionally. Mm -hmm. so you see and the she braid. was just shadow. You, you don't see. You don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. No. But. Which scares me because I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is this, the, the, I don't know how much forward The Last of Us 2 is. Like, is it 10 years, 20 years? You know what I mean? It can't be that long because Ellie is still. Ellie in the well, last of us too, right? And so I guess Well Ellie had she's she's aged a lot between part one and two. Mm -hmm. I don't see Bella Ramsey aging that much. All right, guys. So closing thoughts. Oh, I'm so sad it's the finale, but what are the pros and cons of the finale and overall as a season itself? All right, so for me, the pros, I mean, for somebody who's never played the game, I thought it was a very good storyline. Um uh, to Actually, I'm not going to say two characters. All the characters in this this uh, season were, were good for yes. the roles they played, every single one. Um, even Kathleen, I'm sorry. I, I, I kind of – Kathleen grew on me when I watched it, rewatched that I'm episode. with you, JR. I think <laughs> – I loved her character. In this yeah. Because she was yeah. so, like, like – she, she was torn. She, she was a person who was ruthless. torn big time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the character building was good. We finally got what everybody wanted was Joel and Ellie, you know, um, close, realizing what they are to each other. However, I will say this, that even I think she knows everything he did, killing Marlene and the, and the Fireflies, but I think she was okay with what was going to happen to her because the decision wasn't Joel's to make, it was hers to make. And she said no matter what, we could follow this to the end, and the fact that he took that away from her, Yep. Is going to plant seeds of doubt for the next season. Yep. The cons, as somebody who never played the game, I wanted to see more effect. You don't have to have effect in every episode, but when they show, make it count. Like you guys described a lot of scenes that they removed that you had, you know, the infected. Like the episode with David, I would love to see David and Ellie have to fight. You know, the yeah. infected. I don't know why they cut that out. Man. That was one of the best scenes. I mean, when you eliminate certain scenes like that, you're like, why? Why? What was the purpose of getting rid of the scenes when you could have had another episode with David? Like I said, David should have been two episodes because of the fact that you could have had that scene in one episode where they have to join forces to fight, and then the next episode is basically where she's captured and you know. You're right. I would have rather had two episodes of David yeah. and yeah. one episode of Kathleen. You meet David halfway through the episode prior, and he's a good guy. They team up. Yeah. It, even in this episode, when you first see him, he seems like okay. Yeah, it's no one could be trustful, but maybe, right. maybe this guy has something going on. Maybe you get that, and then the next episode starts when he starts becoming aggressive and the. Uh, cats out of the back but yeah i yeah. agree with that jerry i would have liked yeah. them another episode probably. Yeah, another episode and the thing is now next season they have to have infected if you go the first two or three episodes with no infected i'm gonna be disappointed to be honest because i, I want to see how they're finding the infected was going on with the infected because that scene where it ended where they were looking um was at jackson town right yeah where um tommy is not for now i don't know about you guys but the minute I saw that, I'm like, all right, I think something's wrong with the town. It's too quiet. It looks too, it looks too quiet, which makes you wonder: Are they going into basically a trap, or is something they're waiting for them that's not Tommy in them? But for me, you have to have infected. I mean, we already know they planted the seeds of Ellie. She grew 
to, to fond of Joel. She grew his trust, but now her trust is kind of shattered. And she's questioning, you know, whether or not he sees her as Ellie or he sees her as Sarah. But that's going to be the big thing going into the next season. Yeah, I, I agree with that I 100%. I think even if you don't have infected in the episode, what I would have liked as well is the threat or the possible threat of infected. They move around too nonchalantly. They use their, their outdoor voices everywhere they go. They're not like, there's not much precaution taken. They're just yeah. going from place to place. They're not, I want to see them more, more scavenging, being more like, you know, uh, aware of their situation. Okay, we got to be careful. There could be a clicker. There could be this. Even if they don't show anything, but that sense of fear in the characters and living in that world, to me, that world, shit, I would love to be in that world then. What the hell? Look how many acres of land you can have and just right. nobody will fucking bother you. Yeah. And, and speaking of the next season, I would love for that couple to come back. Oh, couple? I love that old couple. You, I would love for them to come back because they were fun. And, and they got the perfect place. Look at that. Who's going to fuck with them there? So, again, uh, I want to see... Yes, I want to see more infected. I want to see more bloaters. I want to see stalkers. I want to see the Rat King come in. There's a lot of shit I want to see in this next season. And then they already have stated there will be more infected the next season because what they're gonna they're not gonna translate the season two all in one. It's gonna be part of season two. So they they already tell you season two and there's gonna be season three and that's gonna cover all of the Last of Us Part Two game. So that's at least now I'm probably feel as rushed. It's gonna flesh them more out, but. That's what I'm looking forward to. I want more, more infected, and I want more, more danger. Like I want these guys to ro- like the scene when Joel got stabbed. Like I want everywhere you go, there's random pockets of people to avoid. That's how the games were. Kind of didn't yeah. get that. You got that early on, and then the show just settled into this comfort level, where this comfort zone. Okay, we're getting to know Joel and Ellie yet, but I want to see the world around them be dangerous again. You know, like we they started like that. And then it just dropped it. And then it just felt like they're just in a world where, oh, okay, there's an occasional infected person. I don't want that. You know, I want that sense of like fear, dread, and every decision they make, every step they take, every uh, every single ounce of air they breathe. I want everything to be dangerous. I want them to be on edge. A world like this, you just can't be like, eh, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, yeah. it don't work. Unless you're like in a protected settlement like Jackson Town. That's okay, but when you're out and about, yeah, man, like the guys are hunting like nothing, they're shooting rifles, making all this noise. Yeah. There's infected, like, what's going on? But right. anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm beating that dead horse once again. But I overall love the series. Um, uh, I love this episode a lot. I love the ending, man, because it was so different and it was brave when the game did it. And I love the fact that the show yeah. adapted it to a T, they didn't water it down. And yep, that's what I'm looking forward to next season. I'm on more action more raiders more infected and there's more bad people in general because yeah. i think you know it was few and far in between in this but we got the story the story out of the way now let's get to the meat and potatoes <laughs> yeah for me pros and cons uh well pros for sure like someone who's been playing the game for 10 years it's definitely been an emotional ride for me because they did the game so spot on um minusing the whole infected part like they stayed true to the story they stayed true to the growth of joel and ellie the moments with bill and frank and kathleen and perry and sam and henry and david and james like they did so good and i almost like want to cry because they did so good and they poured their heart and soul into it. You can feel it. And, you know, I, uh, bravo to every fucking person that made this and was a part of it. And, um, wow, I am going to cry. <laughs> Look at me getting emotional as I have been this whole damn season. <laughs> but it's been great. As far as the infected, uh, the infected, I am so on board with the both of you on that. Like, there should have been more. There's been... I think, and like I said before in the last episode, the moments where it said three months later, three months later, three months later, that's where they fought infected. So they basically cut it out and they gave us little taste here, little taste there. But even the mall, even the mall was barren. Like one infected? One. One? 
Mm -hmm. But it was many in the game. Yes, yes, yeah. And the only time we saw Raiders was a flashback. Yeah. Which one was yeah. that? Which flashback? Which flashback? Um, um, with um, what's his name? Um, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Yeah, it, yeah, at the fence. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought the Raiders were also what but stacked Joel. That was the, the that was part of no, I don't. They're not that was part of the flock. That was part of the flock. They were a oh, scavenging okay. group. That's oh, that's right, that. with David. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it needed more, like you said, danger. It needed more uh, horror to it. Um, I want to see gore. <laughs> Sorry, but I do. I don't want, you know, any more of this crying. <laughs> I just want to, you know, see more action, see more gore, bloaters, clickers. Like, they're so freaking cool. And when we did see them, it was so fucking spot on and cool. Like, it makes my gamer ha heart happy. <laughs> and um, even overall, another pro, the music behind the scenes and like all of that, the background and like imagery, like it was so spot on everything to the background, to the where they're walking through everything, the snow, the giraffe being fucking real. Like, come on. Even, even the, the choreography of the action scene is almost right. shot. By shot. Like everything was spot on, and to add fucking people from the game's voices into the story who don't actually act like Troy Baker, he's not an actor, he's a voice uh, over person. And he, the only thing he's really voiced over was Lego movies. If you didn't know that, he's in Batman Lego, he's in all those Lego voiceovers. He, he's not an actor on screen like this. This, to me, is one of his first acting on screen. I don't know if he's in anything else that I don't know about, but uh, to me, this is his very first on screen, his vet, his visual face. He's definitely top five voice actors out right now. Facts. I mean, the, the, yeah. His catalog, holy fucking shit. But you're right. On screen is a different story. It's definitely different. And, you know, he did, good. He did great. And to hear his Joel voice made my ear twitch. But yeah, and same with Ellie, Anna. <laughs> but overall, great. Yeah. Great season. I just I wish there was more infected. That is all. It was you know what? well done. It could have been. I'm not saying this was bad, but this could have been a disaster. It could have been. So I, I appreciate what we got. You know. I agree. No, it's. I mean, if we had a rate it out of ten, shit, it was definitely an eight. Well, <laughs> you know, minus two of no infected. Like, it was such a great series. I enjoyed it, and I was emotional especially throughout the whole roller coaster with Joel and Ellie and all the other characters that we got. But I've been playing The Last of Us 1, part one, for 10 years. I've been playing The Last of Us 2 just one time. So I'm still like, oh, wait, I got to go back and play and like figure things out. Well, I have a gist of the overall story, but yeah, there's major stuff coming in. I hope we're ready for it emotionally, physically, mentally. Like this has put us on a roller coaster. So, so my name is Lexi. This is JR and Ricky Grimes, and we will be back for season two of The Last of Us. I can't wait to see you then. Until then, peace. Don't look back.